Amazing. And, that, and that's where we are. We're in chapters, and I'm going to take a real hit at it today. I'm going to do it the best I can to keep it moving and not get bogged down. And, um, and, and so, uh, please, your outlines uh, are given to you so that uh, you can... I, I, the hardest thing I'd have, seriously, the hardest thing I have in presenting this material to you is writing these outlines. I'm serious. You can ask Pastor Tanya. I spend hours writing these outlines. And the reason why, thank you so much, I appreciate that, Rick, is I'm trying to give you information in this outline that'll, make, that'll be reasonable to you so that you can walk through it and, and actually have a, know what it means, but I can't put everything in there because I would be writing a book about it. And so choosing what goes in and what stays out and all that uh, really becomes a, a real task. And so anyway, those outlines are for you. And, uh, and, and I'm going to try to run through, and I, I've really set a, a really tough pace for myself over the next, uh, let's say we've been through chapter 11, so there are 22 chapters, so chapter 11 is exactly halfway. So what I'm planning, my pace is, I'm going to give you two chapters every week. That's what I want to give you. So chapters 12 and 13 today, and that'll be, that'll be basically we'll be finished in six Sundays counting this Sunday. All right, so I, let, me, let, me, let me just swing in there and see if I can get going, and we'll look, at, uh, we'll look at chapters 12 and 13 because these are very significant. Business begins to pick up here on earth. Just to kind of get us in on the flow of where we are, you know, we've, we, we've come to the end of things where uh, John in chapter, in chapter 4, verse 1, uh, John uh, the apostle on the Isle of Patmos uh, sent there because of his testimony for Jesus. He's a, he's a preacher. He's an old man, about 90 years old, but the, but the government's afraid of him, so they banish him to a prison island called Patmos, and there God begins to show him this vision of what, what's going to... What the end times are going to be like. And the first thing is John, uh, the, the Spirit of God or God said, come up here and I'll show you great and mighty things which shall come to pass. And so John is called in the Spirit off the earth into heaven and, and, and God begins to reveal these things to him. And, and, and so as he reveals it, John begins to speak it. And, and he starts with letters to seven churches, which mean uh, seven churches on the earth. They get the word of God. He has good things to say to them. He has bad things to say to them. He talks to them about what church is going to be like all the way through every generation. You see some of, uh, you know, church feeling, church spirit, like the first one, second one, Ephesus, you know, Thyatira, uh, go, down, go all the way down to Laodicea, which is the worldly church, which is where we are right now. And I don't think you have to look very far to see that the general age of church that we're in right now is just pretty complacent. I mean, churches are, you know, let's just, uh, let's don't make a lot of noise. Let's just live and let live. Uh, they've adopted social gospels. They've, uh, you know, they, they've become like the world. And that's what Jesus said it was going to be like just before his coming. Well, in chapter 4, he comes. John goes up to be with him. And then he starts describing all these scenes up in heaven. And the, we see angels and we see elders on thrones. And we see beasts that are flying around with six wings and four faces. And they're praising the Lord. And there's just a hallelujah glory time up in heaven around the throne of God. And then you see the Lamb of God who's worthy. He's the only thing worthy to open the seals. There was nobody in heaven, nobody on earth, nobody under the earth, nobody, you know, anywhere that was found worthy. And John said, it broke my heart and I broke down crying. And then all of a sudden he said, I looked, turned around and behold the Lamb of God who's sitting in the middle of the throne. He's found worthy to open the scroll and break the seals. And he begins to do it. And as he begins to break the seals, uh, four riders come out on a white horse and a black horse and a red horse and a green horse, kind of a pale green horse, and they start letting spirits loose or letting, letting, letting things loose. Things that are already here but are restrained by the Holy Spirit, they re release the restraint. And so, um, you know, that spirit of Antichrist that's already here right now, and I know you can see it, you just watch the news. Isn't it getting worse and worse? I mean, am I telling you the truth? Now, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care what side of the political spectrum you fall on. I'm not, this is not politics that I'm saying to you. 
What I'm saying is, watch what spirit you see loosed on this earth. Spirit of lawlessness. The devil is called the lawless one in the Bible. And that spirit of rebellion, that spirit of lawlessness, that spirit of anarchy, that spirit of uh, one worldness instead of instead of a national pride, you know, uh, not to instead of wanting to be separate and be unique and be great, uh, let's everybody join together and let's just make one big world under one big agreement under one big leader, you know. I mean, let's do this, the UN and all that kind of stuff, and that's the spirit. And if you look today. That's what you begin to see everywhere. You know, watch the news, man. I mean, it's just anarchy and lawlessness and rebellion and you know, kill the police officers and disobey the law and, and harass people in restaurants and movie theaters and, you know, become a mob and a crowd and insult people and chase people and embarrass people and, and intimidate people and bully people. That's the spirit of Antichrist. And that's the spirit that's alive right now, and it's getting worse. But, but when the red, white horse rides, uh, the Holy Spirit will be unrestrained, will move the restraints, and it'll really get bad. And then the red horse and the black horse and the pale horse, as each seal is broken, you know. And then you see martyrs under the throne, which uh, represent some people that are going to be killed after they come to Christ in, in, in the tribulation. And then uh, moving on, uh, you see seven trumpets that start blowing. And when these seven trumpets start blowing, the earth starts being attacked. During the seals, what, uh, 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 spirits are being attacked. Um, uh, frames of mind are being attacked. Uh, things that are already happening on earth are just uh, opened up with no restraint. I mean, it's just like uh, a movement of all of that, uh, that evil that the world is and, and wants and believes and leads and and, and desires and all that, the, the seals are, are when those kind of things are left unrestrained. There's no Holy Spirit holding them back and keeping them off. So they just, they're, it's like evil on steroids. It's like, you know, anarchy on steroids. It's like unbelief on, on steroids. And then come the trumpets, and then you see stuff falling out of heaven, like you know, uh, like a, a meteor hits the earth, and fire mingled with uh, with with hail, and then a big uh, mountain, like a meteor, falls in the earth, and one third of the sea turns to blood, and one third of the ships are torn up, and all of that kind of stuff. And then a big a big cosmic, uh, 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 I don't know if it's a comet or what, it's called wormwood, and it hits the earth, and it it goes, and now one third of the fresh water in earth is turned bitter and one third of the people on earth die because they drink this bitter water or in the aftermath of what that bitter water does to people uh, it causes panics and, uh, and, and people can't get enough and maybe people die in the, in the uh, wildness of those times trying to, trying to get to the water and they have none and this drought and all these kind of things and all of these terrible things began to hit the earth and, 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 and then the fifth trumpet blows, fifth angel blows his trumpet and all of a sudden a star falls from heaven with a key to the, with a key to the bottomless pit. And that, old, and that old star, everybody say Satan. Satan. Yeah, goes and unlocks that pit and out of that pit demon locusts come. Remember, we, they described them. They had stings in their tails, and they had the ability to hurt people for five months. They couldn't kill anybody, but they tortured you and tormented you for five months. This was the start of a war, actually. This was, a, was, a, was a, the first attack, actually, that begins an event that, that comes to fulfillment when the sixth trumpet blows. When the sixth trumpet blows, a world war starts. There's going to be World War III, but it's going to be during the tribulation period. And World War III is going to make all the other wars that have been fought look like a Sunday school picnic. And this is not the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon is at the end of things. The Battle of Armageddon is at the end of tribulation. 
The battle of Armageddon is ended when Jesus steps out of heaven, steps on earth, and wipes all the armies out. And you'll see that, and blood will run as deep as the horses' bridles and all that kind of stuff. This world war is ended when the northern confederacy, Russia, Turkey, uh, their allies with the Arab states and so forth, when they are just annihilated by the armies of Israel and um, as God has always protected them. If you want to read something exciting, go to the history of the Jewish people. It's just unbelievable how Michael the archangel has protected Israel all the way through their existence. Michael the archangel, by the way, in the word of God has been given charge by God. He is called the chief of princes. There is a prince over every nation. And when I say prince, I'm talking about a small p. A prince is a spirit. And the Bible says that we live in a spiritual world. Now, I'm not trying to be spooky and mystical and all of that, but I just want you to know that if you believe the Bible, then you believe in the spiritual realm of life. And that, and that there are... Uh, there is the prince of the power of the air is one of his titles. Uh, Paul says that, uh, that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and evil and spiritual wickedness in high places, telling us that there are enemies that camp out and are set up over areas of life, over nations, and nations have been created and nations have been taken and a, and, a, and, a, and a small P, a small P has attached itself to make sure that that nation never succeeds and that nation is distressed and that nation never finds its way to God. The one nation on earth that doesn't have a small P over the top of it is the nation of Israel because the nation of Israel was assigned to Michael, the chief prince, Michael is the prince of Israel. You wonder how do they dodge the bullet every time? You wonder how in the world can all of the Arab world with thousands of tanks come against them and they have a tricycle pointed toward them. And yet they end up not only defeating a hundred tanks, they, they get the tanks. And they take the tanks in, now they got a hundred tanks, and now they lost all of those, and airplanes fly over, and they, and they get them. And no, I mean, It's just um, unbelievable amazing. If you want to be excited, read that stuff. It's, it's just unbelievable. I'm sure you can find it on the Internet. Just go to the history of the Jews and just see what happens. And so anyway, that happens in the sixth seal. Well, now in the, media, in the meantime, between... The sixth seal and the seventh seal, we have this big parenthesis. And in this big parenthesis, these are things that John believes we need to know before the bowls are poured out. Uh, the bowls are filled with the wrath of God, by the way. They're bowls. They're probably ceremonial bowls, if you want to know what they look like. You know, they're, they're just little bowls that get filled with oil, and they're, they're put on the uh, the, the, the candlestick that's in the altar, you know, that holds oil and burns wicks of the candle. It's probably a little, a little serving bowl like that, but, but it doesn't really matter what, what kind of bowl it is. It's what's in the bowl that really matters. The bowl is filled with the wrath of God. And boy, it's about to be poured out on this earth, but before it gets poured out, because it's going to end everything. It's going to bring an end to the world. It's going to bring an end to the devil. It's going to bring an end to evil. It's going to bring an end to everything. Before that happens, John, by the Holy Spirit, says, you need to know a couple of things. You need to know how the devil got started. You need to know why we have such a war with evil. You need to know what God plans to do about it so that you can be encouraged that God has not thrown you out and forgotten you, but God is faithful to his word, faithful to his promise, and the devil cannot win. No matter how bleak it might seem at times, no matter how uh, dark the day, no matter how you know oh, fearful the times, God wants you to know that Jesus is victorious in life and that he is going to win and that at every opportunity he takes to just press, G, press Satan on the head. You know, 
there was a prophecy that was given in the very first book of the Bible. Do you remember the very first prophecy that was given? The very first pro prophecy was given when Adam and Eve were in the garden. And whenever, and, and whenever uh, they broke God's uh, law by partaking of the, of the tree of knowledge, they didn't make it to the tree of life, thank goodness, or we would have been lost forever. They did get to the tree of knowledge between good and evil, and they ate of it, and all of a sudden they knew they were naked. And then they ran and hid from God, and God found them in the garden. Adam, where are you? And he said, I'm, I'm laying over here naked in the bush. And he said, who told you you were naked, and have you eaten? Have you done that? And he, Adam fessed up, and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then one of the curses that God put on the earth, you know, is that you'll, thorns and thistles will come from you. And he looked at man, and he said, by the sweat of your face, you're going to earn your living. And, uh, and then he said, and, 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 there, and this woman is going to have a seed. In other words, there's a genealogy that's going to be inside her that's going to be born one day. And the seed of that woman is going to crush your head, devil, because of what you've instigated on this earth. That is a prophecy by God telling the devil, you know how you're going to come to an end? I'm going to have a seed born out of that woman that has the power to crush your head and destroy you. That was the first prophecy given on the earth. And now in the book of Revelation, we're getting around here in chapter 12 and 13. You're going to see that woman and you're going to see that seed and you're going to see what he does to the devil. It's amazing, man. One of the things the book of Revelation does is it just, for, for anybody who knows the Word and loves the Word and believes the Word, it just confirms everything that's been said that was left back there hanging. And I, would I want to show you all those things. I'm trying to, to give you an idea so you can respect the authority of the Word and see that you know it's, this is not just something haphazardly thrown together with all these funky stories about, about you know, uh, exciting things. These are real, live fulfillments of the Word of God and the entity and all that is there. So let me just begin, all right? So we have an intermission last week, chapter 10 and chapter 11. Chapter 10 talked about John being discouraged and, G and Jesus encouraged him. You know, and said, all right, that, 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 that big angel up there that has that, you know, rainbow on his head and his son is, his, you know, all of that. And he's got this little scroll and you go ask him for the scroll and then he's going to give it to you. And then you eat it and it's going to be sweet in your mouth and bitter in your stomach, but it's going to revive you and so forth. You know, yeah, judgment seems fun to start with, but then you realize, hey, people are going to die. My friends are going to hell. My parents are going to hell because they aren't right with God. And that, that was... I'm glad they got their comeuppance and made you a little bit happy uh, turns bitter in your stomach. It doesn't stay, you don't stay happy about it when you realize people you love are going to be involved in this and be killed and destroyed and going to hell when they die. It's unbelievable. And then he, in chapter 11, you know, he comes in there and he starts telling us about, uh, about these uh, great things and all of these uh, uh, tremendous happenings that are going to happen. And then now in chapter 12, the first thing we see is the woman... Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. All right, let's just stop there one second. The only scripture, the only place in the Word of God that you can find anything like that description is way back in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, chapter 37, there is the story of the basically the founder or the progenitor of the nation of Israel. His name is Jacob. You remember that name? Jacob had 12 boys that became the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you remember this? He had a father named Isaac. He had a grandfather named Abraham. And you remember Joseph, one of the sons of Isaac, Came to his dad one, uh, came to his brothers one day and said, uh, "Hey, I had a dream last night, and guess what the dream was? There was this, there was this uh, sheaf of uh, uh, barley or wheat or whatever it might be. It was a sheaf, and it stood up, and there, and, and one of them stood up higher than the other eleven, and the eleven bowed down to the big high one, and they said, "We're not going to bow down and worship you, smart aleck kid." And then he went to his mom and dad the next day and said, I had another dream, and I saw the sun and the moon, and I, and I saw 11 stars out here. 
And then I saw one star over here and the sun and the moon and the stars bow down to this star right here. And his dad said, you think we're going to bow down and worship you? You think that? And, and so what this is, is this is the nation of Israel. You say, who is the woman? Some say it's Mary. No, it's not Mary. Some say it's the church. And I, no, it's not the church. This is Israel. This is the nation that was birthed out of those 12 sons of Israel and, and mom and dad. And so uh, what, what John is seeing, he said, now a great sign appeared. So when you see the phrase, a great sign, what it is is telling you that what's about to be seen is symbolic. It means there is something you're looking at that represents something else. On purpose, it looks like something, but it represents something else. It's a sign unto you. And so this is the nation of Israel. And so the nation of Israel is going to birth something. Well, what is it that the nation of Israel can birth? Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. I submit to you that no other nation on the face of the earth has hurt so bad and so long as the nation of Israel. No nation on earth has been persecuted and, and, and enslaved and beat down and torn up and, and ridiculed and hunted and killed and mutilated like the nation of Israel. So in this verse, the Bible says, and what John is saying is that in, in, in this future time, the nation of Israel it, it, it births out this, this, this child, this babe, now, you know who the babe is, right? The babe is Jesus. The baby is Jesus. Jesus was a Jew. You know this, right? Jesus was born. He was of the house and lineage of David. The reason, the reason that Mary and Joseph was in the city of Bethlehem is because they were of the house and the lineage of, 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 of David. And so Jesus, born as a Jewish person at a Jewish place, at a Jewish time, he's the babe that is born. So, so, so John is saying, all right, there's going to be a babe born out of the land of Israel, and, this, and, and Israel's going to have trouble. It's, they're going to have pain, all of the, and they're going to have, they're going to, it's going to be trouble for them all through life. And another sign appeared in heaven. So, uh-oh, now we have two signs. We've got the sign of a woman having a baby, and, and it's being pain and it's hurt. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. <laughs> That's weird, freaky, right? Now, I'm not going to, I mean, I'm just going to tell you what that means and not identify them because we're going to have some chapters to come that are going to deal with who, who these horns and heads and all that stuff is. I'm just going to say here that what this is signifying is that these seven heads and ten horns represent worldly kingdoms, worldly powers that this dragon thinks makes up his confederacy. The word diadem here means crown. It means like a king. So he has, he has a, an authority crown on each one of those heads. Seven heads means seven, seven countries, seven states. Got two, two horns on some head. One horn has to be on another head. And he's got, got crowns on his head. So these kingdoms give him power. These kingdoms are his authority. And, um, and he, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. Now that takes you back to Genesis, I mean, back to Isaiah, which is before Genesis. Do you know that sin has existed before people existed on earth? Are you familiar with this? Before God created the heavens and the earth and before God separated the sea from the land, before God put the light in the, in the sky and before God created man or animals or put anything on earth, there was a rebellion in heaven. And Isaiah 14 says that Lucifer was a tremendous uh, archangel in heaven that was given charge of, of the worship of Jesus in heaven, and he got it in his heart. His pride got into his heart somehow, and he said, I'm going to be greater than God. I'm going to set my throne above God. I'm going to be worshiped bigger than God. And the Bible said God cast him out of, Satan, out of heaven, and, a, and evidently about a third of the angelic force went with him. So here he is, the prince of the power of the air, 
floating around in the air because there was no earth to even be landing on. He, 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 he just got unceremoniously removed out of the presence of God. And the book of Revelation tells us now this devil, this red fiery dragon, which often symbolizes the devil, He's not a little tiny guy with a little, you know, with a little suit and the little horns and the pitchfork and, you know, a little tail. I mean, he's a fiery dragon that is dangerous and, and evil. And he drew it, and his tail drew in a third of the stars in heaven and threw him to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. So here's the picture Israel is going to birth a child out. This child is Jesus Christ. And the devil is sitting there waiting to catch this baby as soon as he comes out and eat him up. Of course, we know that was what the devil did. Because all the way from the time the devil has existed, he's tried to stop the Messiah from coming. I'm just going to give you, you know, a few of the little highlights of it. And I, I got to hit them quick. But these, these right here are, are all efforts to kill the child. If the devil could have done any one of those things right there, there would be no, there would be no Jews for, for, for Jesus to be born through. I mean, if you can't kill the baby, and we know the devil can't kill Jesus. So if you can't kill the baby, you got to kill the mama. Look, Satan thwarted God's plan for humanity, Adam and Eve. That was an attempt to stop God from saving mankind. Uh, to destroy or corrupt the godly messianic line. If I can't get him, I can get his family. And so there's no clear uh, path. There's no uh, clean generation. So if I can get them to pollute themselves by being involved with other people or something terrible happening, and now they don't know if they're Jews, part Jews, mixed Jews. I'm telling you, there's no race on earth so pure as the Jewish race. Because God's kept them that way because the Messiah had to come through the line of, of the Jewish nation and they had to be pure. So uh, the devil prompted Cain to kill Abel. The first two people on, on earth were Cain and Abel and the devil convinced Cain to kill Abel and so he did right there in the garden and they had another brother named Seth and, and, and the devil uh, tried to pollute the godly line of Seth with these angels that would break out of the bounds of normal uh, human and angel relationship, and the devil tried to destroy the, the pure line of God in this earth and plotting the potential rapes of Sarah and Rebecca. You remember when Abraham went into the country and said Sarah was his sister because she was pretty and didn't want to be killed? Well, if the old king had got with Sarah and Sarah had this polluted child, boom, no pure Jews. And then, same thing happened with Isaac. Isaac, his son, did the same thing. They were going through a land, and Rebekah was his wife, and he told the king then that Rebekah was his sister. Well, if the king said, well, if that's your sister, then I'm going to you know, have fun with her. And, and if he had gone into her and, and, a, and birthed a child, nobody, what kind of lineage is this? This is not a pure lineage. That was the devil's plan for that to happen, enticing the Egyptians to kill all the male children of, of Israel. You know how Moses became Moses? Moses was a Hebrew boy, and the law of the land was kill all the baby boys that are born. The midwives were supposed to kill every Jewish male baby that was born on this earth. The, 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 the Pharaoh said, uh, rah, rah, uh, these people are a blight on earth, and he gave the order, but the midwives began to hear God saying not to kill them, and so they began not to kill them, and one of them they didn't kill was a little baby boy that they put in this little bulrush basket and they started floating him in the river and Pharaoh's daughter found him and his name was Moses and he became the Moses that called for the people of God to be let go by people. Well, if, God, if the devil could have had him killed before he got put in the basket, there would be no generation enticing Saul to murder David. That would have ended all the generations, enticing evil Queen Athalic to kill David's descendant. That would have ended the Jews, enticing hateful, horrible, haughty Haman to slaughter all the Jews in the days of Esther. That would have killed the Jews. I'm just saying from the very start, 
the enemy was sitting there ready to catch the baby and kill it before it get, right as it was being born. And John says, hey, that's the way the devil operates. She bore a male child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. See, it didn't matter what the devil did because he couldn't accomplish his purpose, and although he tried everything, Jesus still came. Though he did his dead-level devil evil worse, he couldn't stop Jesus from being born. Because in spite of all of that uh, uh, enticement and, and under, undermining and, and, and thwarting and, and, and devilish work and, and all of that, all in spite of everything that he's done from the time that humanity hit this earth until now, Jesus still came. He couldn't stop the birth. And then the woman fled into the wilderness where she was where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. And this is just saying, you know, the 1,260 days, you remember, is three and a half years. So God has a place prepared for Israel for this last three and a half years of tribulation. The devil is going to be on a manhunt for every is is Israeli, every Jewish person in the world. And they're going to have to flee. They're going to have to run away. And God says, I got a place for you to run. I prepared a place for you to run. Some people think it's in the city of Petra, which is a rock fortress which they've, to which they've run to before. I'm just thinking I'm not really sure that would do really any good in the days of airplanes and stuff like that. I mean, in the days where soldiers had to come up the hill, I can see how, you know, being on the high ground might help you. But nowadays, it would just fly a helicopter over you and blow the whole top of the mountain off. I mean, my goodness. So, it, But it's somewhere. Wherever it is, God's got it covered. And he says, I'm gonna, I've got a place that's safe for you to hide. Just so I don't forget it, I, I want to just mention this to you, that Jesus, when he was here on earth, talked to the Jews about what was going to happen in those days. And he said, one of these days, the abomination of desolation is going to be set up in the temple. And when you see the abomination of desolation, and I'll talk to you about that in a moment, when you see him set up in the temple, know that you better start running for your life. Because when that abomination of desolation hits that altar in the temple, you are going to become hunted people. And the devil is going to try to kill you. You think Adolf Hitler was bad. He looks like a Sunday school teacher compared to the Antichrist. You'll be hunted on the Judean hills. You'll be tracked down like a dog. You'll be, you'll be killed and mur murdered and mutilated. You better run for your life, Jesus said. And then he looked at him and he said, And pray that your flight... You're running away, be not in the winter time or on the Sabbath day. In other words, you know, the law of the Sabbath said you couldn't go but a mile on the Sabbath day. You couldn't walk but a mile on the Sabbath day. So Jesus said, you better start praying right now that when you have to run, it's going to be more than a mile, and you better pray it's not on the Sabbath day, and you, better, and you better hope it's not in the winter. And he also said, you women with children, you're going to be in bad shape because you're going to be trying to drag that child who's nursing, and it's going to slow you down, and you're going to be in danger of being killed. That's what Jesus said to him, and these are the days they're talking about when Israel's going to have to run it for its life, and, and God's got a place where he's going to protect them for the last three and a half years of this tribulation period. Everybody say, great tribulation. The tribulation period lasts seven years. The first three and a half is called tribulation. In that period, the Antichrist is going to be trying to establish a relationship with Israel, become their best friend, convince them that he's all for them. I mean, he's their boy. He loves them. He's going to take care of them. He, 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 he couldn't live without them. They are his people, and he's just awesomely uh, believing that they are special, and they're going to swallow that mess hook, line, and sinker. The Antichrist is a political person. The false prophet is a spiritual person. You'll see him in a minute. 
But this Antichrist is just smooth as glass, handsome, charming, wonderful, great political leader of this world. And he's going to convince during the first three and a half years to Israel, he's going to be, I'm your best friend. And then right in the middle, boom, he's going to turn on them when he doesn't need them anymore. He's going to set up a swine on the altar that's in Jerusalem, which he's given them to rebuild Solomon's temple right where the mosque of Omar is. He's going to take the mosque of Omar and crumble it and destroy it. Those are the, that's a Muslim mosque. And he's most likely going to do it to say, hey, I don't care about them. Uh, we just defeated them in that war with Russia and all that. They're nothing. And boom, uh, take, a, take a bulldozer and just push it off. And in and, and, and Israel, you can have that spot to rebuild Solomon's temple because that's where Solomon's temple. And they're going to build, 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 build. And right in the middle of the year, middle, they're going to have a big dedication ceremony. And they're going to have the altar open down there, that great altar where everybody sacrifices the blood. And it's all symbolic and it's great. And they're going to be sitting there and there's going to be a bunch of people in there and they're, yeah, yeah, we yeah. And, and all of a sudden, the Antichrist is going to break in the back door, walk down that aisle with a pig in his arm and, what, and throw that pig on that and kill that pig on that altar. And that's the abomination of desolation that Jesus said, when that happens, you better run for your life. Because from that point on, he's going to kill you and you're going to be gone and I'm going to prepare a place for you because for the next three and a half years, which is great tribulation, you're going to be hunted down on the Judean hills. So the serpent spewed, out, spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Uh, this is, a, remember, symbolic now. And, and what this earth is, I mean, what this flood is, is probably a flood flood of uh, propaganda, a flood of uh a flood of will ill, a flood of, uh, uh, of, of character assassination, a flood of uh, misinformation, you know, just, just flowed out of the Antichrist to condemn them and criticize them and convince the world that they're evil and, and show me where he is and we're going to track them down and we got a reward for them and the earth is going to help Israel hide from the Antichrist who wants to kill them because God has a special place prepared for them to hide. And the Gentile nations of the world are going to help the Jews hide from the Antichrist. That's, the, that's something. Isn't it? All right, now this is the war in heaven, and the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. Now, see. This is it. Just in this little section, you get you get information and it carries you to point, and then it comes back and says, "Okay, you need to know this." And it, it starts here again. It goes, and let me just talk to you quickly about this is this is a war in heaven, and the war in heaven broke out, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So, that, I'm, let me make this say this to you clearly. All right, right now, and I, I know I've said this to you before, and I, I hope you remember, but right now, you know where the devil is right now? I mean, right now, this moment, you know where he is? He is in the presence of God. And what's he doing? He's accusing, yeah. In other words, everything he can say about you, which he, really, he probably doesn't even need to make anything up. I mean, we probably give him enough to say this real. He doesn't even have to make up anything. He just has to keep pointing it out to God. <laughs> look at that attitude. Look at, look at that nature right there. Boy, that's, that's, that's real pleasing, isn't it? You're proud of them, aren't you, God? You hear those words they say? You see that stubborn pride in them? You see that laziness? You see that lack of godliness? You see that complacency? You know, you see that, hey, that's a lie, isn't it? Yeah, uh-huh, there he is. I thought they were supposed to be saved. Amen. And he's accusing you day and night in the presence of God. The devil is in heaven. Now, I know you, you know, you say, the devil is in heaven. Well, yeah, and you're going to see it in just a minute. You're going to see what happened. Well, the devil is in heaven right now. That's where God is. So if the devil is standing before the throne of God, he's got to be in heaven too. And he can't be two places at one time because he's created being just like me and you. He's an angel 
and now he's the devil because he rebelled against God, but he didn't quit being an angel. And he's not, he's not omnis omniscient, omnipotent, and, uh, and the other omni, omnipresent. omnipresent. Thank you, Mark. He's not, so, so he has to be there. So right now, the devil has access to heaven. Well, now, according to this, when tribulation on earth starts the last three and a half years, something's going to happen in heaven. And Michael, the great chief of princes, the warring angel, is going to say, okay, buddy, time for you to hit the road. And the devil's going to say, make me. And Michael's going to just say, Shh, come here, boys. And there's going to be a little war in heaven. And Michael's going to take him and <clears throat> unceremoniously kick his little raggedy self right out of heaven. So now he's out of heaven and he can't come back. He can't stand in the presence of God anymore. He can't accuse you day and night anymore. He's been extricated from heaven. So the war, one of the reasons from, for the war was to kick him out of heaven so he can't be there accusing you anymore. So here is Satan in the first step of going down, 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 boom, kicked from heaven to the air. And then the Bible says, but they did not prevail, nor was any place found for, uh, for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out just so you'll know, it's talking about the devil, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now, oh, let, me, let me just stop right there real quick. So Satan has been removed from heaven, him and his angels, one third of the, heaven, one -third of, the, of, the of the angels, according to uh, Isaiah 14, uh, he drew one third of his tail and, and just swept the stars out of the sky, boom, uh, now, all, now they're hanging out, they're the prince of the power of the air, they're uh, the little P of the world, not the, big, not, the, not the big P, but the little P, little prince of the world. And so they've been kicked out of heaven, and now they're the prince of the power of the air. And I'm just making distinction about that because he's going to get kicked out of the air in just a minute. We'll watch. Then I heard a loud voice. Now, what happens whenever, whenever the devil gets kicked out of heaven? A worship praise service starts in heaven. Everybody's so happy that he's gone and he's not there anymore. You know, you, you wonder why God has to create a new heaven and a new earth at the end of everything? Because the devil has polluted both of them. And so at the end, God said, well, i got to make a new heaven that's never seen the devil because I don't want his grimy little Paul prince anywhere up there. And, of course, he's, he's, he's dominated the earth, and so we're going to have to create a new earth because he has his little raggedy footprints all over everything. So whenever he gets kicked out of heaven and he can't come back, because from, from, the, time, from the time he was kicked out until the time that just happened right there, he's had access into heaven. The devil has been there. And they felt that, and they've sensed that, and, 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 and it's put a strain, and it's a, you know, I mean, it's like an uninvited intruder is in here, and he's, and he's got access, and he's condemning, and he's criticizing, and he's bringing negativism, and he's being, you know, he's being evil and uh, ugly, and now he's been kicked out, the door's been shut, he can't come back, and now a praise party starts happening in heaven. And here's what it said. Now, and this is what happened. Hey, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Woo! And then some of them said, hey, let me tell you how uh, when I was on earth, how we defeated the devil. You know how we defeated the devil when I was there on earth? We overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's how we beat the devil. And everybody said, you beat the devil by the blood of the lamb? Hallelujah. And then said, well, you know how, how, how we defeated the devil when I was on earth? 
Uh, it was the word of our testimony. We went around telling people how they could come to Christ and how they could know Christ and how things would be great for them. And, and, and there were just groups testifying all over. It's the blood of the Lamb, yeah. And it's the word of our testimony. And then somebody said, and everybody that was courageous enough to give their life because they loved Jesus more than they loved anything else in the world. There was a group there that said, hey, the first group said, we got cleansed by the Lamb. And the second group said, we made a confession of our cleansing. And the third group said, it was courage to stand up before the world and not care of being killed. That's what started happening in heaven when the devil got kicked out. Praise party. Oh, yeah. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens. And you who dwell in them, woe and woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. So what is good for heaven, he's gone, is bad for you. Because now he's kicked down to the earth. The second kick down in a series of four. Kicked from heaven to the air. Kicked from the air to the earth. Kicked from the earth to the abyss. Kicked from the abyss to the lake of fire. His whole future is down, 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 down. And the Spirit says... Hey, it's wonderful in heaven. He's not there anymore. But if you're on this earth, it's going to be rough for you because all of his anger and all of his wrath is going to be taken out on you because he can't get to God and he can't get to the saints. Everybody look around and say, that's us. Can't get to us, baby. We're on the, the 24 throne, elders on the throne and all of us are standing around going, get him, God, get him, God. That devil, that slimy joke, I mean, I'm telling you, Get him, God, get him, and get him. And the devil's trying to, you know, get us and gnaw back. Oh, I'm sorry. And gnaw back and get that for me, would you, Mikey? And, uh, and, and he's trying to capture us, and he's trying to kill us, and he can't get to us, and he can't touch us, and he can't touch God, and he can't touch Jesus, and he can't touch the Holy Spirit, and he can't touch us. And so he looks around, and he said, bless God. I'm going to get somebody. Somebody's going to pay for this. Uh, so only thing he can do now is to try to take out his wrath on the people that God loves and on the people that represent the people of God. You know, I mean, it, if you can't hurt them, hurt somebody they love. Damage them by taking advantage of people that can't, you know, take. So here comes the false prince. This chapter... Now, okay, we've got a false prince and we've got a false prophet. Let me, I can't, I can't get into this, y'all. I got, I'll get it next week, okay? I'm sorry. Is that enough? All right, but you see what's happened here, right? You see right here in the middle of tribulation, when, and I'm going to just remind you that all of this stuff that's happening right here is happening in heaven while five trumpets are being blown and all this stuff is happening on earth. On earth, you've got hail and fire and blood coming down. You've got a meteor hitting and a third of the ships and a third of the sea is blood. You've got, you got a comet named Wormwood come down and it creates bitter water on the earth and, and everything gets bad. And then you've got a, a third of all the vegetation that's burned up. And then you've got a, 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 a Satan fall out of heaven, which we just read about. That what we just read about is what was happening when the fifth trumpet was blowing. You remember the fifth trumpet said, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. That was when Satan got kicked out and fell to the earth with a star, with a key to the abyss. And he opened that and those demon locusts came out and then world. That was going on on earth. And while all that was going on earth, we just read what was going on in heaven. And so the woe trumpets have started. Remember, there are three trumpets that says, woe. Whoa, whoa. The woe trumpets start the, the three and a half years of great tribulation, and here they are right here happening on earth as all these events begin to go on in heaven. You see, God, he wants us to know this. 
He says, you need to know this because it's going to bless you. It's going to help you. It's going to, it's going to give you peace. It's going to give you comfort. Because I know one of the greatest questions that any of us ever have in life is, is there ever going to be justice in this world? I mean, it, 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 the evil just get more evil, and it just seems like they never get punished, and there is no end to it, and, and there, that, that's not right. There's no judgment. God saying, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They're getting to come up and, because the devil's getting his. Yeah. He's going to be treated like he needs to be treated, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to be really devastating for him. So let's stand on our feet.